and welcome to another video from the Danfoss Plus One Software channel. If you need help with Plus One Software, you're in the right place. My name is Ellie Zinno, and I'm a technical trainer here at Danfoss. Torge Peterson, a software product application engineer at Danfoss, created all the lovely screenshots, screen captures, and edits. In this video, I would like to show you how to set up the CS10 device with a Bluetooth connection. Setting up a Bluetooth connection. The first step to setting up a Bluetooth connection with the CS10 is to start a Skateway connection. I used the latest version of the CS10 that was available at the time when I created this video. It is recommended to download the latest LHX and P1D files from the Update Center in order to configure the CS10. After getting connected and opening up the P1D, I will start with setting up my CS10 with Bluetooth. First, I had to restore the default settings so that you can follow along with my instructions. This can be done on the overview page where I restored the default settings and rebooted the device. Bluetooth configuration. The default settings are displayed on the Bluetooth page. Starting in the configuration tab with the default Bluetooth name, CS10, followed with the EID code number. You can keep this setting if you want, so there's no need to change that. But for this video example, I renamed it to CS10 underscore Bluetooth. Don't forget to click save. The green LED indicates that the Bluetooth name format is good. Since Bluetooth is enabled by default, the name format will be checked automatically after saving. Now I can check the correct format, delete the device name, keep it empty, and click save. You can see that the LED turns red because the device name format has not been met. It should include at least one character. Now I've changed it back to CS10 underscore Bluetooth, and I've clicked save again. Now the format has been checked once more, and now it's correct. Next, I checked the box next to Auto Enable BT, which means that the Bluetooth unit is automatically enabled after power on. Otherwise, this needs to be set manually all the time. If Auto Connect is set, the Bluetooth unit automatically connects to the last connected device after startup. I will use this functionality in my example and set the parameter to true by checking the box. Otherwise, the device will need to be manually connected to the CS10 afterwards again each time. After every power up, the device is discoverable for 90 seconds, which is a fixed constant in the CS10 application. This discoverable functionality can be triggered via the discoverable button in the connection tab. I saved my settings and switched over to the next tab called connection. The Bluetooth connection page shows the status of the Bluetooth unit. To see if the Bluetooth has been enabled, you can check the Bluetooth enabled LED. The CS10 Bluetooth unit that was previously set up is now shown in the field Bluetooth. Device list provides a list of known devices with their names, MAC addresses, and pairing statuses. A known device is a current or previously paired Bluetooth device. Using the unpair button unpairs the respective device and removes the device from the list. That list gets updated automatically after clicking the following buttons. Unpair, connect, go to, and scan. The number of listed devices is displayed in the field amount of devices. The index for the first device to be displayed can be applied in the field start index. You then will have to click the go to button. Detailed information about the status of the device regarding connection and errors is provided in the status section. Bluetooth connections to the CS10 are handled on the paired device itself, which is going to be paired with the CS10, so in the mobile or tablet setting. I then created a new Bluetooth connection called CS10 underscore Bluetooth. This Bluetooth name is visible to other devices and can be paired or connected to. As soon as a device has been paired with the CS10, it is listed under Device List. If the CS10 is not listed as an available device after scanning on the PC, mobile phone, or tablet, you can click the Discoverable button to make the CS10 visible for another 90 seconds. If the CS10 is still not visible as a Bluetooth device, you can start a device reboot on the CS10 overview page. In my example, I used my phone, went into the Bluetooth settings, and scanned for other Bluetooth devices. The CS10 Bluetooth was listed, and I was able to pair my phone with the CS10. My phone is now listed on the CS10 page, Bluetooth connection, under Device List. The Is Paired LED is green, which means that the pairing has successfully established. I clicked Connect, 
to establish the Bluetooth communication between my mobile phone and the CS10. Once I did that, the LED connected under status changed from red to green. Now I can use my mobile service tool app to connect to the CS10 for further servicing. Now I'll do the same with my laptop by going into the Bluetooth settings and scanning for new devices. If it doesn't show up, the discoverable button on the CS10 Bluetooth connection page can be used. After I paired my laptop and my CS10 successfully, it is listed in the device list as well. I clicked on connect and then the CS10 was connected with my laptop via Bluetooth. To test the Bluetooth communication from the laptop to the CS10, I went to plus one interlink and selected the device, which is listed with the EID number and Bluetooth. Hit refresh, and then if the device is still not appearing, there might be an issue with the communication from the PC to the CS10. To fix this, you can do a power reset on the CS10 and check the Bluetooth connection from the PC to the CS10 once more. Sometimes it is necessary to restart the service tool as well. In my case, I was able to successfully connect the CS10 to my service tool using the interlink gateway. In my example, I have connected an MC024 controller to the CS10 CAN bus to show that the signals are transferred from the CS10 correctly and that the CS10 acts as a remote gateway to my controller. As long as default Wi-Fi credentials have not been changed, the CS10 CAN bus will be limited and after performing a system scan in Service Tool, the connected devices will not be visible in the ECU list. To fix this, the default credentials for the Wi-Fi SSID need to be changed, even if you don't use Wi-Fi communication. Go to the Wi-Fi page, select the Operation Mode Access Point, and switch over to the Operation tab. Change the default SSID and the password as well, Click Save, and the CAN bus access has been enabled. Do a new system scan, and all connected devices via CAN bus are listed in the ECU list. Now I can use my service tool with all its normal functionalities to read out or write parameters, download firmware or parameters to the CS10, or any other ECU which is connected to the CS10 CAN bus. We hope that you found this tutorial useful. Remember that Plus One Community Help is available on the Plus One User Forum, or you can contact the Plus One Help Desk. And don't forget to check out our other Plus One videos here on YouTube at Plus One Software. Happy programming.